Louis Aragon, French, LWI, the 3rd of October 1897 to the 24th of December 1982, was a French poet who was one of the leading voices of the surrealist movement in France, who co-founded with André Breton and Philippe Soupault the Surrealist Review literature. He was also a novelist and editor, a longtime member of the Communist Party and a member of the Académie Goncourt. Topic Early life 1897 Louis Aragon was born in Paris. He was raised by his mother and maternal grandmother, believing them to be his sister and foster mother, respectively. His biological father, Louis Andriou, a former senator for Four Calquier, was married and 30 years older than Aragon's mother, whom he seduced when she was 17. Aragon's mother passed Andriou off to her son as his godfather. Aragon was only told the truth at the age of 19, as he was leaving to serve in the First World War, from which neither he nor his parents believed he would return. Andriou's refusal or inability to recognize his son would influence Aragon's poetry later on. Having been involved in Dadaism from 1919 to 1924, he became a founding member of Surrealism in 1924, with André Breton and Philippe Soupault under the pen name, Aragon. In the 1920s, Aragon became a fellow traveler of the French Communist Party PCF along with several other Surrealists, and joined the party in January 1927. In 1933 he began to write for the party's newspaper, La Humanité, in the «News in Brief» section. He would remain a member for the rest of his life, writing several political poems including one to Maurice Thorez, the general secretary of the PCF. During the World Congress of Writers for the Defense of Culture 1935, Aragon opposed his former friend André Breton, who wanted to use the opportunity as a tribune to defend the writer Victor Serge, associated with Leon Trotsky's left opposition. Nevertheless, Aragon was also critical of the USSR, particularly after the 20th Congress of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union 1956, during which Joseph Stalin's personality cult was denounced by Nikita Khrushchev. The French Surrealists had long claimed Louis Carroll as one of their own, and Aragon published his translation of The Hunting of the Snark in 1929, shortly before he completed his transition from snarksism to Marxism, as Martin Gardner puts it. Witness the key stanza of the poem in Aragon's translation. Gardner, who calls the translation, pedestrian, and deems the rest of Aragon's writings on Carroll's nonsense poetry full of factual errors, says that there is no evidence that Aragon intended any of it as a joke. Topic: The Commune, 1933 to 1939. Apart from working as a journalist for La Humanité, Louis Aragon also became, along with Paul Nizan, editor-secretary of the journal Commune, published by the Association des Écrivains et Artistes Révolutionnaires Association of Revolutionary Writers and Artists, which aimed at gathering intellectuals and artists in a common front against fascism. Aragon became a member of the directing committee of the Commune Journal in January 1937, along with André Guide, Romain Rolland and Paul Valent Couturier. The journal then took the name of French Literary Review for the Defense of Culture, Revue Littéraire Française pour la Défense de la Culture. With Guide's withdrawal in August 1937, Valent Couturier's death in autumn 1937 and Romain Rollin's old age, Aragon became its effective director. In December 1938, he called as chief editor the young writer Jacques Decor. The Commune Journal was strongly involved in the mobilization of French intellectuals in favor of the Spanish Republic. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Director of CE Soir 1937 to 1953. In March 1937, Aragon was called on by the PCF to head the new evening daily, CE Soir, which he was charged with launching along with the writer Jean Richard Bloch. C.E. Soir attempted to compete with Paris Soir. Outlawed in August 1939, C.E. Soir was reopened after the liberation, and Aragon again became its lead, first with Bloch then alone after Bloch's death in 1947. The newspaper, which counted Emile Dannon among its collaborators, closed in March 1953. <laughs> World War II to 
In 1939 he married Russian-born author Elsa Triolet, the sister of Lilia Breek, a mistress and then partner of Russian poet Vladimir Mayakovsky. He had met her in 1928, and she became his muse starting in the 1940s. Aragon and Triolet collaborated in the left-wing French media before and during World War II, going underground for most of the German occupation. Aragon was mobilized in 1939, and awarded the Croix de Guerre War Cross and the Military Medal for Acts of Bravery. After the May 1940 defeat, he took refuge in the Southern Zone. He was one of several poets, along with René Char, Francis Ponge, Robert Desnos, Paul Aylward, Jean Prévost, Jean-Pierre Rosnay, etc., to join the resistance, both through literary activities and as an actual organizer of resistance acts. Otto Abbots was the German governor, and produced a series of black lists of authors forbidden to be read, circulated or sold in Nazi-occupied France. These included anything written by a Jew, a communist, an Anglo-Saxon or anyone else who was anti-Germanic or anti-fascist. Aragon and André Malraux were both on these auto lists of forbidden authors. During the war, Aragon wrote for the underground press Les Editions de Minuit and was a member of the National Front Resistance Movement. His poetry was published along texts by Vercors, Jean Bruller, Pierre Segers or Paul Alluard in Switzerland in 1943 after being smuggled out of occupied France by his friend and publisher François Lacanel. He participated with his wife in the setting up of the National Front of Writers in the Southern Zone. This activism led him to break his friendly relationship with Pierre Drew La Rochelle, who had chosen collaborationism. Along with Paul Aylward, Pierre Segers and René Char, Aragon would maintain the memory of the resistance in his post-war poems. He thus wrote, in 1954, Strophe's Pour Se Souvenir in commemoration of the role of foreigners in the resistance, which celebrated the Franks tirers et partisans de la main d'oeuvre immigré FTP moi. The theme of the poem was the Red Poster Affair, mainly the last letter that Misik Minochian, an Armenian French poet and resistant, wrote to his wife Meline before his execution on 21 February 1944. This poem was then set to music by Leo Ferre. Topic. After the war At the liberation, Aragon became one of the leading communist intellectuals, assuming political responsibilities in the Comité National des Écrivains National Committee of Writers. He celebrated the role of the General Secretary of the PCF, Maurice Thorez, and defended the Cominform's condemnation of the Titoist regime in Yugoslavia, sponsored by Thorez. Aragon was elected, in 1950, to the Central Committee of the PCF. His post, however, did not protect him from all forms of criticism. Thus, when his journal, Les Lettres Françaises, published a drawing by Pablo Picasso on the occasion of Stalin's death in March 1953, Aragon was forced to make excuses to his critics, who judged the drawing iconoclastic. Through the years, he had been kept informed of Stalinist repression by his Russian-born wife, and so his political line evolved. Topic. Les Lettres Françaises In the days following the disappearance of C. E. Soir, in March 1953, Aragon became the director of La Humanité's literary supplement, Les Lettres Françaises. Assisted by its chief editor, Pierre Day, Aragon started in the 1960s a struggle against Stalinism and its consequences in Eastern Europe. He published the writings of dissidents such as Alexander Solzhenitsyn or Milan Kundera. The monetary loss caused by Les Lettres Françaises led to its ceasing publication in 1972. It was later refounded. In 1956, Aragon supported the Budapest insurrection, provoking the dissolution of the Comité National des Écrivains, which Vercors quit. The same year, he was nevertheless granted the Lenin Peace Prize. He now harshly condemned Soviet totalitarianism, opened his magazines to dissidents, and condemned show trials against intellectuals in particular the 1966 Sinievsky Daniel trial. He strongly supported the student movement of May 68, although the PCF was skeptical about it. The crushing of the Prague Spring in 1968 led him to a critical preface published in a translation of one of Milan Kundera's books Le Placentary. Despite his criticisms, Aragon remained an official member of the PCF's Central Committee until his death. The publisher 
Beside his journalistic activities, Louis Aragon was also CEO of the Editores Francais Réunis (EFR) publishing house, heir of two publishing houses founded by the Resistance, La Bibliothèque Française and Higher et Aujourd'hui. He directed the EFR along with Madeleine Braun, and in the 1950s published French and Soviet writers commonly related to the socialist realism current. Among other works, the EFR published André Still's Premier Chalk, which owed to the future Goncourt academician the Stalin Prize in 1953. But they also published other writers, such as Julius Fusik, Vyacheslav Nezvil, Raphael Alberti, Yanis Ritsos or Vladimir Mayakovsky. In the beginning of the 1960s, the EFR brought to public knowledge the works of non-Russian Sovietic writers, such as Chinguiz Aitmatov, or Russian writers belong to the Khrushchev Thaw, such as Galina Nikolaeva, Yevgeny Yevtushenko's Bobby IAR in 1967, etc. The EFR also published the first novel of Krista Wolf in 1964, and launched the poetic collection Petite Seren, which collected works by Pablo Neruda, Eugene Gilovic, Nicolas Guillen, but also less known poets such as Dominique Grandmont, Alain Lance or Jean Ristat. Topic. Back to Surrealism Free from both his marital and editorial responsibilities having ended publication of Les Lettres Françaises, La Humanité's literary supplement, in 1972, Aragon was free to return to his surrealist roots. During the last ten years of his life, he published at least two further novels, Henri Matisse Roman and Les Adieu. Louis Aragon died on 24 December 1982, his friend Jean Ristat sitting up with him. He was buried in the park of Moulin de Villeneuve, in his property of Saint Arnaud and Evelines, alongside his wife Elsa Triolet. He was and still is a popular poet in France because many of his poems have been set to music and sung by various singers, Lino Leonardi, Hélène Martin, Léo Ferré the first one to dedicate an entire LP to Aragon, with his 1961 breakthrough Les Chansons d'Aragon album, Jean Ferret, Georges Brassens, Alain Barrier, Isabelle Aubret, Nicole Rieu, Monique Morelli, Marc Ogaret, et al. Many of his poems put into music by Jean Ferret have been translated into German by Didier Caesar alias Dieter Kaiser and are sung by his duo. Topic. Conclusion Aragon's poetry is diverse and varied. He favored equally poetic prose and fixed-form verse, to which he brought a renewed sensibility. After a very free early period, marked by surrealism and its subversive language, Aragon returned to more classical forms measured verse, rhyme, even. He felt that this was more in keeping with the national emergency during World War II. After the war, the political side of his poetry gave way more and more to lyricism for its own sake. He never went back on that embrace of classicism. He did however integrate a certain formal freedom with it, sometimes recalling the surrealism of his early days. Countless poems by Aragon have been set to music and become popular as songs. As a novelist he encompasses the whole ethos of the 20th century, surrealist novel, socialist realism, realism, nouveau roman. Indeed, he was one of the founding personalities of the novel of his time. He was nominated for a Nobel Prize in Literature four times between 1959 and 1965. In 2010, La Poste French Post Office issued three stamps honoring Louis Aragon. Bibliography Novels and short stories Anisette au la panorama, Roman Les aventures de Télémoc Louis Aragon, Les aventures de Télémoc Le Libertinage, 1924. Le Paysan de Paris, 1926. Le Con Diarine, 1927, published under the pseudonym Albert de Rudizi. Les Cloches de Bale, Le Monde Rail, 1934. Les Beaux Courtiers, Le Monde Rail, 1936, Renato Prize winner. Les Voyageurs de l'Imperiale, Le Monde Rail, 1942. Aurelian, Roman, Aurelian, Le Monde Rail, 1944. Servitude et grandeur des Français. Scenes des années terribles, 1945. 
Les Communistes, six volumes, 1949 to 1951 at 1966-1967. Le Monde Rail. La Semaine Saint 1958, published in English in 1959 as Holy Week. La Fou Delsa La Mise à Mort Blanche au Lubli Henri Matisse, Roman 1971. Théâtre, Roman La Mentir Vray La Défense de l'Infini Les Aventures de Jean Fautre la Bite Topic. Poetry Le Musée Gravan, published under the pseudonym François Le Calaire by the Editions de Minuit La Rose et la Rezada Fou de Joie, 1919 Le Mouvement Perpetuel, 1926 La Grande Gaité, 1929 Persecuté Persecutor, 1930-1931 Hora Lural, 1934 Le Crève Corps, 1941. Contica Elsa, 1942. Les U Delsa, 1942. Broseliand, 1942. Le Musée Grevin, 1943. Complaint de Robert Le Diable, 1945. La Diane Française, 1945. N. Atrange Pays Dans Mon Pays Louis Mime, 1945. Le Nouveau Crève Corps, 1948. Le Roman Inacheve, 1956 Elsa, 1959 Les Poets, 1960 Le Fou Delsa, 1963 Il ne m'est Paris que Delsa, 1964 Les Chambers, Poème du Temps qui ne passe pas, 1969 Demure de Malkin, 1970 Topic. Essays Une vague de Reeves, 1924. Treatise on style, 1928. French, Traité du style. Pour un réalisme socialiste, 1935. Topic. See also. Le Mans 100 books of the century, a list which includes Aurelian. Category, works by Louis Aragon. Topic. References Topic. Further reading Benjamin Ivry Francis Pooling, 20th Century Composers Series. Faden Press Ltd. ISBN 0-7148-3503-X. Pulitzotti, Mark Revolution of the Mind, The Life of André Breton Bloomsbury Publishing plc. ISBN 0-7475-1281-7 External links Jarive au je sois étranger poem with music, listenable online. Les lettres françaises.